Hey guys. Today we're going to mess around with this uh, leather face bust. And it's made out of silicone. Um, some of my students have been asking how to paint silicone busts. Uh, this is dragon skin. It's like very squishy and stretchy silicone. Um, what I always tell them, and a lot of you guys will agree, the only way to paint silicone is with silicone. So it, it's essentially you're going to dilute a whole bunch of uh, platinum silicone and mix pigment into it. Um, for this one, I'm using Psycho Paint from Smooth On. And basically, it's just a platinum silicone, like a paint base. I think they call it, uh, what's it, Novox is the thing. But you can use um, Camp Fuel, Naphtha. Cam fuel is actually the cleanest form of naphtha, so I tell a lot of people to use that. Um, and instead of doing a airbrush, I, I think we're gonna. I want to do it by hand with regular brushes. A lot of guys don't have airbrushes, can't afford them, whatever. Um, and there's a, they've been told a lot of people say without an airbrush you can't paint these things to look right. So we're gonna prove them wrong. Um, so I hope you enjoy. We're gonna do it in some time lapse when we get to the painting part, but uh, I'm gonna start first with um, diluting the, the silicone, and I'm gonna start with a light shade of blue over all the skin, and then we're gonna follow that up with a red, um, another flesh tone, drying each color in between, because we wanna bury those colors under the flesh tone to make it look real. And then we'll get all nasty and start doing blood and you know, all the stitching areas and things like that. So let's get started. Guys, I wanted to let you know too that the paints we're using are paints that can be mixed with silicone. Um, you can go to Smooth On and buy this nine pack. It's all, you know, the paints that they use mixing with silicone. You can't just use any paint. You can't use acrylics or airbrush paints. It has to be stuff that's made to mix with silicone. So um, they have this nine pack, all these colors come in it and uh, that's more than enough what you need to do most projects. So we'll do color by color. The first one's gonna be this blue here. If you guys can see that, that's part A. It's probably the size of a quarter. You don't have to mix these gigantic batches like you see people do, because this goes a long way once you dilute it. So that's about as much as I use um, of each part A and part B every time I do a, a color. So I'm gonna add part B to this now and then I'll show you how much paint to use because you're using very, very little paint. All right, guys, this is what I did. So I, I didn't realize it wasn't filming, but I use an actual toothpick and just put a, you know, a dot of paint into that silicone, mix it up and then use the, um, you can use naphtha or the Novox or whatever you have, camp fuel to cut it down and you get this Kool-Aid water type consistency. These are gonna be more like washes, just like a stain on this because we want that skin tone to look realistic before we start to bruise it and batter it like it would be in real life. So we're gonna do basically the same thing we would do if we were painting a life like bust just to get all the skin tones proper and then we'll get into the bloods and gore Okay guys, if you see, now we have a light blue shade to it, which is gonna be that vascular under layer. Um, if you see any of this orangey brown stuff, this was in another video, I was um, showing somebody else, a student of mine on a private lesson, how to 
you know use oil paints and things like that so i just used a, a real light oak uh, yellow okra and was screwing around with this to show them but that's all going to be hidden anyway so um it still has its you know flesh color but it's definitely shaded blue right now which is what we want because you got to remember skin has lots of colors blue yellow brown green i mean everything's in it but he sewed on skinned human flesh so it's going to be you know damaged bruised and banged up and we're going to get to that and you'll see um so the next color we're going to do what i would use a hair dryer in between each shade um if you don't use a hair dryer you got to give it at least two hours to cure but you can force dry it with a hair dryer in about four minutes. So I'm gonna do that now, um, not recorded obviously. And then we'll get, the next color is gonna be uh, a red. Guys, I wanted you to see that this is the amount of paint I use, that tiny little bit when I mix these batches. So you don't have to go overboard. If you do too much, it'll be too dark. Um, it won't be reversible. This way, if we use little bits of pigment, it's very subtle and you can always add more or cover things up easier so just wanted to show you that okay guys there's our red um the other thing i wanted to tell you too is make sure you use um some kind of a cheaper nylon bristle brush you don't want to use your expensive brushes and ruin them even though you can clean them with the, whatever you use to dilute it so if you're using camp fluid or the smooth on Novox, you, it, they, they're just never the same again. So use some kind of cheap nylon brush and throw them away at the end. That's what I do. All right, guys, so now as you see, we have blue and red on here, okay? It's, it's starting to come together. It's starting to look like abused skin, but if, I know this light suck, but if you get close, you can still see it's it's absolutely, there's, you, can, you can see the flesh colors. Now we're gonna do a flesh color over this again, but all the, the low lights are showing much darker now. Um, the the blue tones that red down from it being so bright um but as you can see it's like i said it, it's starting to look bruised now uh which is that that's exactly what i was going for i, I don't i don't want you know uh um you know a, a lifelike thing i mean it, we, it, it's it's skin um here it, where there's regular chest that's all going to be covered with a shirt but remember in the movie he had a skin disease so that's why at the end, if you saw me concentrating on here and around here and stuff, I put some darker red splotches because that's how his skin was in the movie. But as far as his mask goes, um, it's starting to look good. Uh, we're going to do uh, a, a skin tone wash now over this. Um, we're going to concentrate more on, you know, forehead, certain high higher spots on it. You don't want to really go into the anywhere near where the stitching is going to go. Cause that's going to be bruised and banged up or you know we'll do some in here nothing around here anywhere we're stitching is we're going to avoid um with the flesh tone and and just do highlights and and certain areas maybe some on the ears some on the higher parts of of you know the skins on his neck and in the video if you see i go real quick on this part of the of the bust and mainly this part of the bust in the back of the head this is all going to be hair Everything here is going to be hair, so it's not too important to, uh, you know, get crazy with the coloring. But um, I still do it anyway, but I, I like the shades of it. I like the, the tone that's going on so far. Um, it's going to get nicer as we go. we still got a few more colors to go, and then we're going to start bringing out some of the, the wrinkles and pores and things like that. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, guys, so now that it's dry... Our next uh, step is going to be a flesh tone. Um, we're going to make it like a wash, just like these other colors. And we're going to go over what we just did. Um, making them so diluted and using them as a wash 
um, it, it helps bury every time these colors dry and we paint another transparent color over it it helps bury those colors um, and give it the effect that it's it, it's natural skin so it's it's not sitting on the top of the, the skin of the bust it gives it a more realistic uh, look so um, so we did blue and we did red now we're gonna do flesh same thing dilute it same way and we're gonna do the entire bust All right, so after that color, now that's probably gonna be next to last as far as diluting stuff. We're gonna start using, uh, you know, stronger pigment stuff to, to start really defining things. Um, this color we're gonna do now is brown. It's a, a you know, another wash color. Um, we're gonna start highlighting all the, the wrinkles and, you know, all the stitch marks, creases. Um, you know anywhere that needs to, to have a little accent to it and as you see this what we've been doing under the light it's hard with these with artificial light um you know you still see the the bruising color um your red the, the blue um so now we're going to bring out all this stuff in the brown and, and if you look real close you can start seeing like the pores and you know Depending on what this one happens to have a lot of texture, you know, like the pores and wrinkles and things and the lips and um, So now we're going to just accent all start getting all these wrinkles and pores to start showing And then we're going to go and do a little bit of yellows and different shades of red probably some green um, But that's it find a brown like this color kind of a coffee you know chocolate color brown here and uh dilute it and then well let's do all the the deep crevices Okay, now we got those browns done and you can see that it's starting to show, um, you know, all the deeper areas. Um, the next one we're going to do is like a start using like a darker red. Um, I usually take red and mix brown in with it to get something like that. Not too brown, um, more on the red side and not too diluted. We're going to make it start making these colors stronger now and do all the stitching. Um, you know, around all the open, the cut flesh, you know, around the eyes and all the stitching and stuff. So, um, here we go. Okay guys, the next step I want to do is I'm going to start kind of, we want to concentrate on all the high spots of the skin, just on the mask. So I mixed up um, yellow, brown, a tiny bit of green, um, and some white and get it kind of light here, almost like a, a, a skin tone, but we want it a little bit darker because we're going to try to make the mask skin 
Um, we're gonna start covering all the, the dark that we did and, and give it a different, um, you know, make it look like it, it's cut off skin, bruised, dying skin. Uh, so dilute it very, pretty well because we want this to be a transparent um, color. So uh, like I said, we're gonna concentrate on all the, on the higher um, spots of this, the skin mask. Okay, if you see what that last step did, what we were trying to achieve there is basically, if we when we keep doing these diluted washes, we keep putting layers of color on top of each other. Then by taking a starting to take colors that resemble the flesh, we bury them in there, so it starts to look um, a little more realistic. Um, this is going to dry. It's very shiny right now. I'm using, you know, matte um, silicone, you know, colors and additives. But even if you used something that was uh, glossy, you can always, at the end, spray it with some, you know, matte finish. But if you look at it, you can still see the, the purples and, you know, all the colors we did. Um, it's just starting to look more like, you know, bruised flesh you know it looks you know real like real skin in here but you see all the bruising and the and the different colors and the pores and um you know once we put the stitching in but you can see how the 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 coloring is starting to to be darker around where the, the skin would be stitched together and uh, more realistic where it's not so in you know in these areas and stuff and you know all the bruising that's going on in here um, and we still got a lot of lot to do a lot more layers but just so you get a closer look at what's going on here you can still see all the reds and blues and like I said in the beginning I'm not worried about in here and stuff I'm, I'm doing a lot of the stuff around the edges but back here on you know the, the sides of the heads and stuff where the hair is gonna go this stuff is way too expensive you guys know that it's way too expensive to, to, to put in areas where there's gonna be hair. So that's why I don't concentrate around in here. I just do any seams or anything that's gonna be seen, um, I worry about. So that's that level, that layer. The next layer we're gonna do is we're gonna start doing some of the darker layers, um, not transparent. Um, you know, the blood, the reds, we're gonna get uh, a dark green and do a dark brown and black. We may even do a little bit of blue, but I might tone that with a little yellow. So um, next one we're gonna do is, is definitely gonna be the, the bloodier reds, the darker reds. Uh, I'm not darker, the, the lighter reds. You know, the whatever you call this, fire engine red or apple red or blood red. Um, this would be a dark red. Um, we're gonna save that for couple steps from now so okay Okay guys, so now I mixed up a, a small batch of brown. It has a little bit of green in it and the tiniest bit of, of black. Um, and I'm gonna accent some of the bigger folds in the forehead and some of the creases near the eyes and where the stitching goes. You don't really have to do this, but I, I figured why not? I wanna tone it down uh, some of the shiny part. Um, and again, all this shine that you see, it's a gloss right now. Um, at the end, we'll seal the entire thing with a clear silicone, um, a diluted silicone with a matte 
finish so you won't see that shine um, so again this is a step that I just wanted to throw in there real quick and do some of these folds and um, you know some of the bigger creases in the face and forehead and stuff so Okay, so now that all the brown has been added into the creases and the dark spots and shadows, um, I think I want to do another layer of brown over the entire thing because it's not dark enough. It's still a little too light um, for what I want. So um, this batch I'm going to mix up like we've done the other ones, you know, really diluted. But I'm going to use a sponge and stipple it on all over the bust. Um, I, I, I want to keep it, if, if you guys don't know this, with silicone painting, it, when you make these diluted batches, you may think that, oh, it's so transparent and only shows a tiny bit, but the idea behind using, you know, silicone paints and stuff is, is layers. Um, the more layers you put of a certain color, the darker it'll get. So you can mix up an extremely dark batch of, of black, let's say, um, but once you dilute it down, it's, it's transparent. And yeah, you'll see it, but it, it'll still be light. You'll, you'll see just the tiniest bit of it. But if you were to paint, you know, four, five, six layers of that diluted black over each other after they dry, it, it'll be black. So um, I, I had a, a student ask me about that yesterday, saying that when he does these stages, he doesn't see big changes. But that's because you got to let it dry in between, whether you give it two hours to dry or you force dry it with a hair dryer, which is like a few minutes. Um, but every time it dries and you add another layer of that diluted color, it'll get darker and darker and darker. So I, I want to see that the, the skin of the face and neck um, like a dark brown if you if you saw the remake uh, a lot of a lot of the photos you could see that it's 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 a dark brown color um so this layer i'm going to mix up another another batch of you know the darker brown um and just add use a, use a sponge and just stipple it over the entire you, you know skin part of the of the mask and then we'll see what it looks like after it dries it maybe we might have to do it one more time um and then from there we're going to start getting into our our layers of you know green and and some of the black to really define you know this the seams and stitch marks and some other little things here and there so uh let's get started with that All right, guys, so now that that layer's dried, you can see um, how much darker it is. Um, some people would want to go darker. I mean, I think I, I like it a little darker. But being that we're using these diluted uh, colors, we can still do, you know, some dark highlights. And if we, we don't like this brown, we can add more to it. Um, you know, if we get up nice and close, you can see... Um, you know, you still see all your purples and your blues, everything that we we did from the beginning, all the reds. I know the lighting's kind of shitty in this room. This is not normally where I do um, the paintings, but I got so much stuff on the other side. Uh, I have to deal with these lights. Um, but you can see after all the browns and the, the flesh tone colors we did and stuff, you still see all the reds and, and colors we did 
I don't even know what stage we're at, how many, what do we do, seven or eight layers of color so far. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I mixed up a, a real dark um, black, but I never use jet black. That's another thing I always tell uh, my students. Um, I always tint black with either a little bit of blue or green, depending on what I'm doing. Um, this one I did with a little blue. Um, it's going to be, you know, diluted again, and it's only for the very deepest recesses of this. So I'm going to go, like, you know, deep into the holes where the stitching would go. I, I may do some out, you know, some spots in the ears, and maybe um, under and around the nostrils, um, you know, down in here where the stitching would be. But that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm not going to go, you know, you see some people who who use the dark colors and do all the wrinkles and stuff, but I, I like to keep things realistic. And, you know, every artist has their own way of doing stuff and painting things, and um, they all look good. There's there's really no wrong way to do art. Um, you know, some people might say one looks better than the other, but I, 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 I don't talk bad about any other artist. I, I believe everybody can be an artist. Um, that's why I teach. And that's why I decided to start doing videos to, to teach people who don't, you know, who don't live near here and can't take my classes. But um, so there's going to be a lot of instructional videos coming in the very near future um, with, you know, I'm going to paint a Jason Voorhees uh, latex bust this week. Um, I got a couple of Freddy Krueger projects. Um, this one we're going to put, I'm actually going to punch all the hair in by hand. Being that this is uh, a very flexible, you know, silicone. You can see that it's 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 like real skin. I mean, it's it's not a hard resin bust. So I'm gonna punch hair all the hair by hand into this. Um, we're gonna do all the stitching. So we'll do it to completion. But again, this dark color that I just mixed up, we're only gonna do, you know, the the, the deepest of spots. Um, no wrinkles. I I just don't want to do that. But I'll you know all the seams and incisions and stitch marks and a few other highlight spots maybe around the ears and whatnot so we'll we'll do that now Okay guys, so after I let that last layer dry, um, I decided maybe I should dress him up and do his hair real quick just so you can get a better idea of, you know, the colors. Um, I didn't make a video of the hair punch. It is, human, you know, real human hair. And I did punch nine gazillion follicles and it took me about two full days of punching. Um, but I have other videos coming out that are... Um, We'll show you how to do, you know, hair punching, the equipment you need, things like that. So I figured I'd just do it real quick and, and find a shirt at the flea market for 50 cents and a tie for 50 cents and slap it on them. Um, I kind of like the coloring at, as of right now. It's a little shiny, but that, that's okay. It, that'll go away once we um, spray it with just a clear, diluted, uh, you know, silicone. Um, with a matte, you know, finish, it'll, it'll be completely matte. Um, but I, I like the way that the blues and the reds, the, you know, bruise. I'm, I tried to get, the, you know, different lighting for you guys so you can see it better. So it's not so shiny. So I hope this is, is okay. Um, but all the layers we did, it gives it that, that realistic um, flesh look. Um, so anybody that says you, you can't paint a bust... Um, especially silicone without airbrush I just I hope you guys learn that you you can it's you know artists can do whatever they want there's so many there's so much talent in this world um, I always tell my students you know if you don't have a lot of them don't have money to get airbrush and, and you know compressors and paints and that as long as you you know use a little bit of uh, imagination and 
you know, you know your basic brushing and blending techniques. You can paint anything with a brush, and you know, um, we'll we'll have other videos that'll get into that a little more. But as a silicone bust, I wanted you guys to see that you absolutely can do it by hand. You can absolutely blend. Um, silicone is just a pain in the ass to begin with. It doesn't matter what you use because um, nothing really sticks to silicone. But um, if you want. You can do washes with oil paints. Um, a lot of my, my students have taken oil painting classes with me. Um, you can stick to the browns, you know, uh, burnt umber. It's a nice dark brown to do some of the dark stuff. You know, black, of course. Um, I used a little, little bit of, um, I think, cad yellow um, with, you know, I think burnt umber. To give the teeth, those couple teeth, a little bit of that stained look. Um, so any of the browns, you can fill in a lot of lines and do washes. That's what's really cool on silicone is that you can take a paintbrush and, you know, paint in one of the deep recesses and then take a Q-tip and wipe off all the, the oil paint and it'll still give it that, you know, whatever color. If you used a, a brown, it'll still give it a brown um, stain or black or whatever color it is uh, so just remember to let it dry for several days before you spray you know any clear coats over it um, so some of the shinier spots on here happens when the silicone that you mix uh, starts to I guess the pot life is at its end so if it's a 20 minute 25 minute 30 minute whatever pot life when it starts to get to that, you know, those final minutes, um, you know, the diluting agents that you use, in my case, I use the Novox from Smooth On. It, it, if it's a, the matte one that I used, it, it starts to become shiny. Um, in the beginning, it, it's not, as you can see on a lot of spots, you know, around here and on the sides of the face. But when it's just about to end the pot life, you start getting that shine on there. But that's not a big deal because once I let this dry for a couple days, I'm going to spray a, a I always use a matte, you know, uh, Novox with the Psycho Paint, and I just do a, a thin clear over the entire thing to seal it, um, seal the colors, but also if there's anything to take care of any of the shiny spots. So um, the only thing I'm going to do differently on this is the eyes. I'm going to work on a putting some veins and then, you know, putting the, the epoxy over them to give it that wet look. Um, and I decided too, if you guys uh, like this, you know, leave comments. This is a new instructional channel. So um, when I hit a hundred, I'll, uh, I'll give this away. I'll have somebody pick a name at random um, and you can have this. I'll pay for shipping to you. I always, uh, enjoy giving things away no you know matter what hobby and i do i've always wanted to I, I like to pass things along so if you guys like this you know subscribe and leave a comment and keep your fingers crossed you may end up with it so uh stay tuned for the other videos coming up i got some pretty cool ones um we got like zombies um regan from the exorcist few different versions of Jason, um, like two or three versions of Freddy coming up. Um, there's going to be, you know, teeth molding videos, how to make acrylic eye videos, punching hair, um, painting, tons of painting videos. So um, check back off and, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.